você. Technology, but I still try. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, this morning we're going to look at a familiar Bible story. It's always kind of curious to me uh, what we we focus on after Easter. Uh, Christ is resurrected. We have a big celebration on Easter Sunday, and the next week, uh, even the disciples that gathered in Jerusalem were waiting for the Holy Spirit. They were just told to go there, hang out, and wait. And so. Um, Rather preach a sermon that says, sit and wait, because, you know, the Spirit's here, we're on mission with God now. I thought we might just double back and look at some of Jesus' last days here on earth. In Luke 18, Jesus is still marching towards the cross. He's predicting many things that are going to happen to him. He's uh, teaching with parables uh, from the rich young ruler and the parable of the tax collector. And then in chapter 19, he kicks off with a tax collector the story of Zacchaeus. Uh, as he was uh, walking through the, the village, uh, he entered Jericho and was passing through that village. And there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a tax collector, not a very favorite person in that culture. And that tax collector was rich because the way the tax collectors made their money instead of getting paid by the Roman government to collect tax, they could charge a percent above the tax, and that's what they got to keep. And there was no ceiling on that. So they could say to Joy McClure, uh, you owe $100 in taxes, but for you it'll be 120 To Tina Hill, you owe 150 this year, but, you know, we don't like you very much, so it's going to be 250 <laughs> So, you know, just kind of a whimsical thing, you know, that they would just kind of, what kind of mood they were in. They, that's how, what your tax bill would be. And so they weren't very, uh, Zacchaeus wasn't a very good person in this sense, and he didn't have a lot of friends. He heard Jesus was coming to town, and he wanted to see him. He was a short guy, and so he couldn't see over the crowds, and he kept jumping up and down and finally saw a tree, and as legend has it, and the Bible story has it, he climbed up in the tree, a sycamore, and uh, got on a strong branch and went out over the street where Jesus was walking down so he could see him. And as Jesus walked under Zacchaeus, he looked up at him and said, Come on down, I want to go to your house. Jesus just invited himself to go to Zacchaeus' house. Wow. I don't really invite myself to people's houses. I go with a purpose. You know, I don't just say, hey, Nick and Sarah, I'm coming to your house tonight for supper. That would be weird, you know, but this is what Jesus did, you know. He just said, hey, I'm coming. Let's go. And Zacchaeus came down and was very excited and happy. Why? Because he didn't have any friends. He was lonely. He knew he needed the Savior. And he'd heard about Jesus. And even though he wasn't physically ill and needed to be healed, like a lot of people were, his soul was ill and needed to be healed. healed. And he was excited because Jesus was going to heal him. He just knew it. And he came down and uh, invited Jesus, to, not invited him, went with Jesus to his home, and they gathered there. An interesting thing because the Pharisees and the religious leaders were complaining already because Jesus was going to go hang out with the tax collector who they hated. And the tax collector's friends were going to be there. And they weren't nice people. See, Zacchaeus' friendship group was pretty limited to people that could tolerate a tax collector. So that's who he was with. And Jesus went. They had a great time. And Zacchaeus' life was transformed. And he looked at Jesus and he said, uh, in paraphrasing here, you changed my life. And so what's going to happen now, Jesus, is because you've changed my life, I'm going to repay anybody I've cheated. And I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. That's transformation. That's what D Jesus does when he changes my life and changes your life. And so this morning we're going to dig in to look at four areas here that this story teaches us about, this encounter with Zacchaeus and Jesus that we need to integrate as part of our lifestyle, I believe. And it's this drama between Jesus and Zacchaeus. And the first thing here that I pull out of this passage of Scripture is that 
Jesus seems to play this little game all the time of let's find the lost person. You know, walking down the road and he sees a guy that can't walk and he stops and he says, you know, in a nice way, kind of, what's your problem? Or, I see you can't walk. And I'm sure the beggar's thinking, well, duh, yeah, I'm laying here in the road. I can't walk. And Jesus says, would you like to be healed? That seems like almost an insulted question. And then the guy says, yes. And Jesus says, do you believe in me that I'm the son of God? And the guy will say, yes, because he's all in. Anything that will work to heal him. And he's heard about this Jesus. And then Jesus says, well, rise up and walk. Your sins have been forgiven. Jesus is playing find the lost person with people that are sick, that are blind, that are can't walk, that have leprosy. And, but he does it with lots of other people, people which are soul sick, prostitutes, and, uh, drunks, and outcasts, and tax collectors. And that's what he's looking at, at Zacchaeus as. You're lost. You're, your life is messed up, man. And I'm going to help you get out of your mess. And, you know, he does that to you and I. He had called my name when I was seven years old. Sitting in a church service much like this, I felt this weird feeling that I learned later and now understand more fully as an adult that I was under conviction of God. I was found guilty by God of the sin of my life and that dreaded awful feeling that I felt inside my, my body, my heart, my soul that day was separation from God. And the only way to get rid of that separation from God in my life was to place my faith and trust in Jesus and said, I believe in you. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe in Jesus saved me. He adopted me into his family. That's just as simple as it works. And as Jesus encountered Zacchaeus up in a tree, the simple words, come down, I'm going to your house, transform Zacchaeus' life. Nowhere in this scripture does Zacchaeus really profess a faith statement in Christ that he believed. He was all in because the transformation happened at the end of the passage. He spoke Zacchaeus' name. He spoke my name. He spoke most of the names of the people here today and called us into a relationship with him. And as he does that, sometimes we came, like Zacchaeus, reluctantly. And yet, he came. We came. And let's think for just a moment about those people that we encounter every day that need a Jesus. They need a Savior. They're uh, separated from God. They may be popular. They may be unpopular. They may be something that someone you know, someone you don't know. But there's Zacchaeus in every one of our lives. And God places these people in our lives because uh, we're the example of Jesus here on earth. And as you and I go through our days, we're supposed to look at somebody like a Zacchaeus and say, in one sense, I want to get to know you. Because that's what Jesus did with Zacchaeus. Come down here, I'm going to your house, and we're going to have a meal together, and we're just going to get to know each other. And that's where it starts with us fulfilling our mission with God. Every one of us, I believe, has someone beyond our family, that God wants us to win to the kingdom of God, wants to share faith with. And so we go through life and we're looking for our Zacchaeus, who we can say, I want to get to know you. And as I get to know them, I want to share my faith with you. And the first truth here is, let's play lost, find the lost person every day of our life. God challenges us to do that. Who's lost? Who needs a Savior? And... Many people have trouble seeing the Savior. That's that second truth in this passage of Scripture. Zacchaeus couldn't see the Savior physically in his day and age because he was too short. But you know, when people want to do something and want to see something, they'll go to great lengths and they'll find a way to do that. He climbed a tree. Now, we are familiar with sycamore trees in our area. And in my woods, there's some pretty big sycamore trees. And the closest branch to the ground is 10, 15 feet. Now, 
I don't think I could have ever shimmied up my sycamore trees and got a branch and climbed out over there and sat over the street to watch Jesus. Why? I'm not that determined to climb the tree. I could probably be physically able to do it, but as my dad would say, the want to isn't there. You know, the motivation isn't there. And so people have trouble seeing the Savior because sometimes they don't want to put out enough effort to see the Savior. People have trouble seeing the Savior because, as Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, the gods of the age have blinded us. He says this, But if our gospel, looking at Jesus, is veiled, or we can't see it clearly, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Because we've already seen it. In their case, the God of this age has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of of God. They can't see the light of the gospel because the God of the age has blinded them. And whatever those little gods are that people are into has blinded them with the truth of the gospel. They're seeking something, but as the old, old song goes, they're looking in all the wrong places. And as they look in all the wrong places and seek the gospel in all the wrong places, they don't find a gospel. They just find they need something new in their life. Jesus says, I will satisfy that longing in your soul. He said to Zacchaeus, come to me, have faith in me, I'll transform your life. And you won't have this need anymore in your life. You won't feel down and out. You won't feel rejected by society. You will feel that you belong. And that's what God's saying to us right now. You belong in the kingdom. Now go find someone else who needs to belong in the kingdom. Zacchaeus had trouble seeing the Savior. And perhaps that was because the people he was around didn't present the Savior very well. You see, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of that day uh, kept presenting the Savior, kept presenting the law of how to get to heaven, presenting rules and regulations, and it left people empty. Because everyone here knows today that if you keep the rules, even as a little kid, there's always another rule to keep. And sometimes you just can't keep all those rules, and so you always fail. Jesus said, faith is not about rules. Faith is not about condemning. Faith is about loving, receiving the grace of God, and then living a life that pleases God. How do I, be, how do I present the Savior to the people that are in search of an everyday Jesus? Most people would say, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but who's going to help me today? Who's going to help me find a place to live, a way to pay my bills, help me when my family's in crisis of health or uh, some other crisis? Well, Jesus is that God who can help us, help find contentment, help find security as we go through life and have those waves of trouble and then waves of celebration. Jesus is with us in every one of those seasons. And that's what people need to hear, and they need to be able to look at your life and my life and say, that's the Savior I want. The Savior is here each and every day of my life. And that's what Zacchaeus was looking for, and that's what the people that we rub shoulders with every day are looking for. I truly believe that. How's God going to help me today? If I trust the Savior, I know my life won't be perfect, but I'm going to have a sense of God with me. And Scripture says yes. My life says yes. Your life should say yes. God is with me at all times. But you know, there's a warning here in this passage of Scripture that if you reach your hand out to a Zacchaeus who may come into your life, if you truly seek a person out and want to befriend them and get to know them and share Christ with them, that you know you could be criticized. Because right in the center of this passage is the fact that the religious leaders were over here observing Jesus' behavior and were very critical of him. Well, you're going to go eat with those, those people, those center people. In fact, in Matthew 11, uh, this was written, For John the Baptist didn't spend his time eating and drinking, and you say, he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say, he's a glutton and a drunk and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners, but wisdom is shown to be right by its results. 
In other words, when Jesus went out and hung out with the wrong kind of people, they became believers in Christ. Their life was changed forever. Nothing that a list of rules could change. Nothing that someone condemning you could change. So here's the, here's the contrast that we have. The Pharisees weren't all wrong because the rules that God had given them to obey were to keep them close to God. But they turned that sense of rules into a condemnation. Remember when uh, Jesus and Nicodemus met in John chapter 3? Uh, they met. Nicodemus came to him in the middle of the night because he was curious. He didn't want an argument. He wanted to understand. And so as he came to Jesus, I can just see him and Jesus sitting around the fire and, and John and Nicodemus saying to Jesus, well, you know, I don't understand how I can be born again. How do I go back into my mom and get born again? And I can see Jesus kind of laughing at him and slapping him on the leg and said, man, for a smart guy, you're not very bright. You know, you're making this way too hard. I'm talking about a spiritual rebirth, not a physical rebirth. And then Jesus tells him, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, you, that he gave his only son, me, that whoever believes in him may not perish and go to hell, but have eternal life in heaven. Nicodemus, it's easy. Stop looking for the catch. All the law that you believe in is fulfilled in me, because I give you the right to be free. And then Jesus says the most important verse, maybe in 17, I didn't hear it condemn the world, which the law does, but to save the world through faith. Wow. That's the message people want to hear. But that's also the message that gets us into trouble with some, some folks when they say, Joe, you're hanging out with the wrong, wrong kind of people. I saw you. I saw you go into the bar and grill and have lunch with this guy which doesn't go to church any place and is known to maybe drink a little too much and corrals and have some rough stories and his language isn't very good. What are you doing hanging out with him? What was Jesus' response? The healthy person doesn't need a doctor. Only the sick. People whose souls are sick need a Savior. And if you and I don't tell them about the Savior, they're not going to come in church and hear it because they know they've already been condemned. We don't intentionally keep them out, but we have the reputation that keeps them out. So we've got to go on mission with God and go out in the world and find a Zacchaeus and tell him about the Savior. Hanging out with the wrong person can be damaging to our religious resume, but it's a high five from God because he says they're a lost sheep. The fourth truth here is that when I know the Savior, my life is transformed, radically transformed, when I really know the Savior. At the end of this passage, the story of Zacchaeus' transformation is, becomes very evident because Zacchaeus says, I'm repenting. He doesn't say that in the scripture, but he has the actions of repentance. Repentance is when we uh, stop doing what we're doing and do something different. If I'm a smoker, I stop smoking. If I'm a drinker, I stop drinking. If I'm a lustful person, I stop lusting and work to not have that sin problem anymore. Zacchaeus was a thief. He was a white-collar thief because he could overcharge people for their taxes, and he accumulated wealth as he did that. And so he said to Jesus, you know, everybody I've stolen from, I'm going to give them their money back. I'm just going to figure out what my living wage was and all the excess, I'm giving it back to them. And oh, by the way, Jesus, I've accumulated a lot of wealth and man, there's a lot of poor people around my town. I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. Now the skeptic would say, how do we know he did that? That's a good question. I don't. But if I'm going to walk by faith, I'm going to trust him. And if you're going to walk by faith, I trust you. Transformation means our lives are lived differently. We live counter to the culture. So in our culture today, it's not cool to go to church. It's not cool to read your Bible. It's not cool to do a lot of things. And when we live counter to the culture, we are being salt and light in our world. We're out there in the world, like Jesus, befriending people 
in getting to know people which need a Savior. That's our mission. When Jesus ascended into heaven, which is celebrated about six weeks after um, Easter, he gave us our orders. Go and win the world, Matthew 28. Go and win the world, Matthew 1, or Acts 1.8. Just go do it. Take the message of Christ, tell people about me, and they'll get saved. And what Jesus says to you and I today is, Zacchaeus was all in. All in. He didn't make excuses. He didn't uh, pat his resume. He didn't like take time to think about this a whole lot, overthink it. He just said, I'm all in, Jesus. My life has been transformed. Today he asks you and I this question. Are you all in? Are you all in in the kingdom? Are you all in enough to find your Zacchaeus to share Christ with? Are you all in to step across some invisible social line and deal with people that are different than you? Engage them in a friendship conversation first? Go to Ugly Mugs and have coffee or one of the local restaurants here and have a breakfast with them and sit down and just get to know them. And once you build some trust with them and they know you're different, begin to share some things in your conversation about how God works in your life every day. What I've discovered is people know I'm a Christian, but they want to know how this Jesus helps me every day. They want to know how he helps get me through rough times in life. When somebody's sick in my family or when there's been a, a death that just really rattles my cage and I can't just really explain that away. How do I cope with grief? How does Jesus help me do that? How does Jesus help me celebrate in a way that they don't celebrate? Why can I have a cookout without alcohol and pot and be just as happy as they are with it? You know? It's just that simple. What sets us apart is our life with Christ. It doesn't make a religious nutcase out of us. It just means a different lifestyle because I'm all in with Jesus. And Jesus asks you today, he asks me today, are you all in? Or is your life transformed enough that you'll find a Zacchaeus and begin working on that person and befriending them and building a relationship with them that they will come to know Christ? I believe that we need to be taking other people to heaven with us. Far beyond our family line. Yeah, I want all my kids and all my grandkids and all Joy's kids and grandkids to be in heaven with us. But how about all those other people that we see every day and we smile and we, have, we laugh with them and we know them casually and yet have we ever made sure they're going to go to heaven with us? That's the challenge. What's your answer to God today? Just a moment, we're going to sing a song and have our hymn of invitation. And the invitation that God extends to you and I, I today, what he invites us to do today is to commit to share our faith with other people. To walk across the street and say hi to somebody who may be totally different than us. Let's pray together and then we're going to stand and sing. Father God, I thank you so much just for our time together today as we've dug into the life of Zacchaeus. And it comes alive to me, Father, in such a way that, uh, man, I've got to find a Zacchaeus. Start building a relationship with a person that is different than me and get to know them, Lord, and, and make sure they're a believer in Christ. Lord, challenge us today to go far beyond the mundane and the everyday uh, actions of life to live above and beyond like you've called us to. For it's in Jesus' name.